Breathless was not her favourite film. Lilith, directed by Robert Rosen, and a film she made in North Africa called Dead of Summer, those were her favourites. In both films she played a woman going insane. I believe Jean's insanity was a political reaction. She saw too clearly the world and it felt like an invasion to her. Destruction of personality, a construction of a depersonalized state of consciousness. Mr. President, I just wanted you to know you were loved and by so many. And so much. Oh, I'm one Brandon. of them. I tried. I didn't dare bother you again, but I got Kenny O'Donnell over here to give you a message. If he ever saw you, did he give it to you yet? No. About my letter no. that, that was waiting for me last night? Listen, sweetie, now, first thing you got to learn, you got some things to learn, and one of them is that you don't bother me. You give me strength. But I wasn't going to send you in one more letter, and I was don't just scared anything. you'd answer. Don't send me anything. You just come over and put your arm around me. That's all you do. When you haven't got anything else to do, let's take a walk. Let's walk around the backyard. And uh, oh. just let me, let me tell you how much you mean to all of us and how we can carry on if you give us a little strength. But you know what I want to say to you about that letter? I know how rare a letter is in a president's handwriting. Do you know that I've got more in your handwriting than I do in Jack? Let's look, on the other hand, at the face of the American actress without the rest of the photograph. What can see right now is that it doesn't reflect anything, or rather, that it only reflects itself. But the self that is nowhere, lost in the infinite immensity and immortal.
some very sad news for all of you. Action. The murder of Gene Seberg, version two, by Joseph Lawley. L'exploiteur ne raconte jamais à l'exploité comment il l'exploite. Opening credit sequence. Actual footage of the car that Gene Seberg died in mixed with footage of her and the actress that plays her. Hotel room at night. What I write here is the truth. According to what I know. And what I imagined. I once knew this woman. So I'm going to try and get it heavy before we start. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. I I can't heal your mind if you don't open the door and let me in. I've been waiting for you, Jean. It seems like forever. Ed, 
memory memory is film cinema is a device cinema's time machine in which men are in search of lost time for those moments that they knew they loved they had purpose <laughs> Very sad news for all of you. Look 
closely at my hands. They're beautiful. I can see big. The end of all life happens in my hands. How does it look, huh? Describe it to me. Describe it to me. How does it look? Ah! How does it look? Tell me how it looks. I have some very sad news for all of you, and I think uh, sad news for all of our fellow citizens and people who love peace all over the world. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis, Tennessee. A man followed me in North Africa. Oh, yeah, you reminded me. Oh, no, man, somebody is in with me. And a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country and greater polarization. Black people amongst blacks and white amongst whites filled with hatred toward one another. What time is it? What time is it? Or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand compassion and love.
Mr. President, <clears throat> on this occasion of your birthday, this lovely lady is not only punctuous, but punctual. Mr. President, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> A woman about whom <laughs> it truly may be said she needs no introduction. Here she is. But I'll give her an introduction anyway, Mr. President, because in the history of show business, perhaps there has been no one female who meant so much, who has done more. Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. She was an all-American girl from Marshallstown, Iowa. Can you imagine actually being from such a place? She wins a talent contest, and then six months later, she's filming the life and death of Joan of Arc. This girl had no experience, and then is thrown into a series of experiences, all of them chaotic, the complete opposite of her hometown, where one is born, goes to school, gets a job, gets married, has children, become grandparents and quietly die. She did not die quietly. Breathless was not her favourite film. Lilith, directed by Robert Rosen, and a film she made in North Africa called Dead of Summer, those were her favourites. In both films she played a woman going insane. I believe Jean's insanity was a political reaction. She saw too clearly the world, and it felt like an invasion to her. She was truly an innocent, and the brutality and unfairness of this world unnerved her. So I'm going to try and get it heavy before we start. There we go. Oh, I get dirty. What is it that you want? 
An actress must know her lines and be able to speak them properly in front of a camera. This is your only responsibility, Gene. The studio wants you back on set by Monday. What is it that you want? I'm a doctor, but I can't prescribe a voice for you. Only God can speak through you. Think of Joan of Arc. She was lost without her voice. They want you on set by Monday, Gene. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? If you don't answer, we can't help you. Do you want to be helped? What is it that you want? An actress must know her lines and be able to speak them properly in front of a camera. This is your only responsibility, Gene. I'm a doctor, but I can't prescribe a voice for you. Only God can speak through you. Think of Joan of Arc. She was lost without her voice. The studio wants you back on set by Monday. What is it that you want? My wife and child ask for you. You charm people, but they don't know you the way I do. Do the gene. Offer. I never met an attractive woman who wasn't acting. My mother was like that. Ladylike and artificial. Not a genuine emotion ever. I need you, Jean. You're not the only one who has needs. I too have my doubts about existence. I haven't been sleeping lately. I am not feeling my best. The studio is depending on me to get you back on set. They want you back. Gene, do you hear me? I'm under enormous pressure to perform. I'm having fucking performance anxiety, and I'm not even a goddamn actor. I can't heal your mind if you don't open the door and let me in. When a director directs an actress, she allows him to come inside her. No? Isn't that how it happens? He enters you and it excites you to give a performance. take to get a reaction out of you? Do you know what it's like, Gene? Huh? Do you know what it's like to day in and day out for me? To deal with neurotic women? How much time did you spend with her?
did you become a part of her life? I imagine she finds you very attractive. Does she? Does she find you irresistible? How would I know what a woman thinks? Isn't that what you do for work? Isn't that what you do? Knowing what people think? Getting into people's minds? I bet you know exactly what I'm thinking right now. What are you, you getting at? What are you getting at? What I'm getting at is... Is the truth? The truth no, that you true. may not even see anymore. Mm. I mean, I I see her. I understand. You I truly her. do. I you see, see how her. beautiful, how gorgeous, how magical she is. So mm. being around her a lot, I can imagine that it must be so difficult to even take your eyes off her, isn't it? So don't lie to me, because a woman knows these things, and I can tell by the way your voice gets defensive as soon as I bring her up. You want to know the truth? <laughs> yes, I want to know the truth. Isn't that the truth? What else is there to know? I understand your fascination, or whatever you want to call it. But guess what? It really isn't as special as you think it is. Hundreds of people, thousands, maybe millions out there, seeing just the same thing. Seeing how beautiful, how gorgeous, how talented she is. But you know what? What you don't see is it's, it's, it's just an image. It's all just an image. It's all just an illusion that you're making up in your mind. Don't you see? That's what you've fallen in love with. I'm hard to do away with her. <laughs> Go away where? Wait. The government fears her. Well, what if I was blonde? Hmm. Wait. Tell me. What if I dress the way she does? Would that fix it? Speak the way she does? Move the way she does? Would that Would fix that it? Turn you on? Would that fix it? Would that turn you on? Are you sure? I need to know. I'll put that back at you. Does it matter to you what I'm about to do? No. It doesn't. It doesn't.
I knew that I had already led her to her death. It was too late to turn things around. But I couldn't be the one that held the final act of her murder. I fled to an unknown region under false identity. I no longer knew myself. For this woman had changed me. I was to be haunted by her for the rest of my life. I no longer existed as before. Instead, I became a living ghost. Jane. Gene Seberg reaching you like a singer on a distant radio signal, fading out, crackling, fading in. When you listen to the tapes, her hesitation has a volume. I can barely hear her voice, but you feel her fully, her curiosity and her courage. I can hear the fragility and humanity, but I can hear that she's being willful, single-minded. Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country. In the spaces and the pauses, she's trying to tell you something. I can barely hear her voice, but you feel her fully. Her curiosity and her courage. I can hear the fragility and humanity, but I can hear that she's being
Uh, we can't live without them either. Nothing. We get older and then old and then we're gone. I <laughs> want nothing. I want nothing. existed as two people and naturally the one that people like is the one that doesn't exist <laughs> well it's actually you know, funny people are stupid that's the tragedy of life people are stupid back I'll take care of you just come back Gene come back I know you know it. You belong to me and you know it. You do belong to me. But I can't help you if you know it. You follow me back to Paris. Now that was before New York and London. But he followed me. He looked, he looked a little bit like Roman. I never loved anybody but Roman. I can hear the voices. I can hear them in the phone lines. I can hear them on the TV. I can hear them around the fucking corners. Oh, Gene. Be careful. I can't help you like this. I told you a million times. You have to trust me. You have to be with me. I cannot help you. Jane, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that what was there once is gone. And what isn't gone, they'll take. They'll take it from you. And then there's nothing I can do. There's nothing anybody can do. Please don't let that happen. Just come back, Jean. Come back. Please. Men who directed her, and she floats through their movies, a cloud of words above her head that are not her words. Not yet. But towards the end, she will find the words in solitude, in silence. She never answered the silence. She never filled in the blanks. What drove her to Paris? Was it love or really shame? This American girl is surrounded by a revolution. Did she believe or was it her guilt? Had she stood outside of America too long? Had Godard whispered revolution in her ears on those evenings in Paris when the sun lingered over the low lines of those old, old rooftops in history loomed in the silhouettes of Paris on the brink of nightfall. And everything that was America was so far away. A distant radio signal faded out, crackling. Did she believe that the world as she knew was ending, that the old, old history of race and hate was ending and the revolution would come with sunrise? Jean Seberg as a refugee from history, 
Gene Seberg in exile. Gene Seberg, frame for frame in a revolution of cinema. Your eyes closed, and when you open them, you were in another place. I've been waiting for you, Jean. It seems like forever. The world you were living in was a harsh and unforgiving place, but here things are different. People love one another, and people make love to one another. We speak a different language, for our love is sonic. When you saw me, you wanted to know me, yet you felt as if you already did. You asked my name, I gave it to you. Peter. You remarked, are you my Peter Rabbit? And I smiled. I became a mirror to your radiance. people went on earth, those we hold dearly and love, but here we find them, and we give them a love not possible on earth. Once you lived in the illusion of separation, things became violent, things became...
confusing. But that time is over, Jean. You live here with me and others like us. God is love. It is a simple equation. We live in Christ and we grow in our capacity to love and most of all, to receive love. This may be the end of the film, but not the end of you. You continue. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Jean Siebert. Where were you born? In Marshalltown, Iowa. When? November 13th, 1938. That makes you what age? 17. And 11 months. And 11 months, almost mm -hmm. 18. Mm -hmm. And do you want to be an actress? Very badly. 